welcome everyone to today's fair work, which is the 12th in our series. And today our partners from RWTH Aachen and Unum Research will introduce their results from their interviews and research they conducted at our fair work partner at Flex. So where they figured out or tried to analyze the decision situations of the workers and the employees and how they are feeling towards automated decision support. And without further ado, I want to hand over to Johannes, who I think I will, will start. Yes, thank you very much, Christian. I will share my screen so that you can see the presentation. Um, you should be able to see it now, correct? Perfect. Yes. Um, Yes, I'm Johannes. I'm here with my uh, colleague Nushin from RWTH Aachen University and Jochen from Joanium Research. And we'll tell you about uh, socio-technical aspects in fair work and our use case study research at a use case partner. Um, while the fair work project encompasses many different areas and systems, Today, we'll focus on uh, the real world use cases in the production. Here we have two different uh, use case partners. One of them is Flex, the other is CRF. Last October, we visited Flex in Althoven, Austria. And we'll tell you about this visit today. During uh, that visit, we did a um, research bunch of research activities to set a foundation for our future research at the research partner, uh, use case partner, to gain first uh, primary uh, data and um, set the uh, setting for our research. As you can see here, during the uh, Fair Work Projects uh, project, there are many different uh, research activities still planned with the uh, use case partners, but we'll focus on our visit, which is in this onboarding phase on the left-hand side. Um, during this uh, visit, we had uh, 14 participants from the factory for our uh, studies. These were five female and nine male participants from diverse backgrounds and job positions covering a wide range of ages. Uh, they were all experienced in the company and in their current position. And while three people were in leadership positions, 11 were operators. During our visit and during this webinar, um, there were three parts and there will be three parts. And uh, the first one was a questionnaire study regarding workload and attitude on automation with all 14 participants. Um, then a questionnaire study regarding decisions and wearables, which Jochen will tell you about. And then interviews regarding decision-making situations, which Nushin will tell you about afterwards. In the first questionnaire study, uh, we investigated the uh, workload of the workers with a modified version of the NASA task load index. This uh, NASA task load index has seven uh, different dimensions, which you can see on the right-hand side. In total, the workers reported a moderate workload over the past week, and therefore, on average, a manage manageable workload with a balanced distribution among various dimensions of the task load index. However, however, one point that was uh, interesting was that supervisors reported a relatively high mental demand, which might be an indication that a decision support system might be especially useful for supervisors. We also investigated the attitude regarding decisions made by supervisors. Here we found a um, highly positive view towards the decisions made by the supervisors. And a, this high mean score uh, underscores the uh, strong alignment of attitudes towards decisions impacting the participants directly. This should be kept in mind 
when introducing a decision support system because, of course, um, the attitude towards decisions made by the supervisors should not fall once a decision support system is introduced. So we have a high bar at the moment since the employees seem to be content with the decisions made by the supervisors. It should be noted, however, that uh, influences of social desirability are possible um, when asking employees about their attitude towards the decisions of their supervisors. Lastly, we focused on um, the attitude regarding automated systems. Here, employees reported a moderate level of trust and attitude toward automated systems. However, while item two and three pointed towards a higher level of trust, as you can see on the right-hand side, item one scored much lower. Item one was, you should be careful with unknown automated systems. So this could be an indication that while employees are generally open towards automated systems, uh, they think that sh they should be cautious with an unknown system at first, which should be kept in mind when introducing a new system. So a new system should be introduced in great detail and um, with the understanding of the operators in mind. With that, I will hand over to Jochen for the second part of the research and of this webinar. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, hello, as I mentioned, I'm from UNM Research and we are what is providing the variable part. And first I want to give a short introduction. So within the Fairback project, our aim is to use variable technology to support the long-term well-being of workers. And we intend to use um, or to provide sensor-based indicators of cognitive, affective, physiological, and motivational strain, stress, but also resilience. And here we focus on three different uh, verb technologies, so sensor shirts, uh, eye tracking glasses, and biosignal wristbands. And we aim to use uh, AI or, or machine learning to link those sensor-based data and indicators to the uh, psychological and physiological constructs in a transparent, explainable, and understandable way as possible. And we used um, parts of those sensor technologies also already in various projects. Uh, Johannes, if you could go to the next slide, thank you. For example, what you can see here would be a tracker for physiological strain. That's our exercise dashboard, the developer and research dashboard where you can uh, get direct feedback while you're training about your heart rate, body temperature, and other sensor-based uh, measures and derived measures. And you can get a very detailed feedback with all the different markers or a very basic one where you just basically get uh, traffic light based feedback about your, the green, the yellow, or the red area of strain. Uh, for Flex, we aimed at two things. First of all is whether they will use or can accept or see them accepting the technologies in their day-to-day -day work. And second, we did a very short uh, questionnaire about the work situation. Um, at first, you see the new slide already. It's the question whether they will uh, can see them use the technology. Um, for watch and shirt, they were very positive about that. So they don't see many problems regarding this, except maybe temperature in a different uh, context of work. Uh, the eye tracking glass, there was more concern, especially because there is a camera integrated. But if we would uh, remove that camera from the glasses, it should be possible and accepted by the workers to use it. Um, so the first conclusion is that the variables uh, would be accepted and especially watch and shirt by most workers in that flex are talking. Uh, could you go on, please? The stats. Thank you. The second part, what we did was to get a very short overview about the work situation 
and the decision situation of the workers is flex because in the end, of course, the decision support system is the aim of the project. And here, if you can go on from this uh, very broad questionnaire, there are mostly five or six aspects that are relevant for us. That's the workload and interruption side at one end, where we can see that they have relatively low quality, qualitative workloads, but a medium amount of quantitative workloads and work interruptions that might be reduced, optimized by the decision support system. And at the other side of this analysis, uh, sorry, <laughs> thanks. Uh, the possibility is to take decisions or to be involved in decisions. That's the room of maneuver and the information and participation aspects where we also have a good amount already at Oktober, but there might even be some room of improvement based on this very short assessment. Uh, thanks. So now, please, you can go on to our final slide. And that is the question whether the workers actually are having to do or to take to make decisions and whether those decisions are high temporal and mental demand. And of course, for the decision support system where we want to support with variable indicators, we are happy that the majority of the workers there have at least a daily or even multiple times daily to take decisions. And several of them have relatively high mental and temporal demand, especially decisions regarding production stops, setting priorities, calling support, but also things like work allocation and quality decisions. But uh, this will be discussed in more detail by my colleague Nushin in the third part of the presentation. So from our part, we're happy that we will, or that the workers will be able to use our verbal technologies. They uh, seem to accept it very well. And there uh, will be several situations that they were, we might have um, option to support the decision support system. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, as previously mentioned, uh, the goal of the Fair Work project is to uh, develop a democratic decision support system. And uh, to achieve this effectively, we needed to understand the decision making processes within companies, particularly within Flex, our use case partner, which is a, a global manufacturing company. Uh, so to do this, we employed a case study approach to examine the dynamics of democratization in industry through uh, multi-agent systems and um, to explore the uh, contextual situation for implementing a decision support system. Uh, our case study focused on a comprehensive uh, analysis of uh, FLEX, which uh, involved uh, document analysis, uh, observation, and interviews. Uh, here in this discussion, the focus will be on the interviews. We conducted eight interviews with employees across uh, different hierarchical positions, uh, including uh, managerial personnel, supervisors, technicians, as well as uh, representatives from the uh, Workers' Council. Uh, we um, asked them about uh, their decision-making situations, the problems they may face, and the characteristics of uh, these decisions. Uh, also, we discussed uh, their uh, opportunities for objection and suggestion, the status of decision-making transparency, and uh, the significance of trust, um, plus what they expect uh, from a a decision support system and what features they think uh, would make it work better. Um, regarding uh, the insights we uh, gained from the interviews, we evaluated the results uh, defining three dimensions, uh, decision making, involvement and expectations. And um, as explaining all the answers would take too long, I've just tried to pick uh, the answers from uh, different hierarchical positions in the company. Um, I'll start by discussing the decision-making situation. Um, one of the most challenging decision-making situation regarding the production line uh, is assessing the authenticity of machine failures. 
uh, to determine if a machine failure is real or false, is genuine or fake. And it's crucial because a genuine failure could result in a production line shutdown. Um, another situation, particularly for supervisors, is um, attributing fault for uh, product failure. They may receive a return product and they may uh, decide whether the issue is an internal problem or if it comes from the customer side or from the transport company. Um, staffing and dismissal decisions are related to the managerial and uh, works conceal the staff. Um, they may need to lay off or suspend employees during periods of uh, reduced workload uh, while conversely, they may hire or rehire employees when facing a high volume of projects. Mm, employees may uh, face various problems during these decision-making situation. Uh, the most crucial one is the feeling of doubts and uncertainties about the accuracy of decision-making, such as uh, the the situation of machine failure authenticity. Mm, these uncertainties may arise due to lack of uh, experience or insufficient information, but it presents itself differently. Mm, experienced staff tend to accept the consequences, while uh, the ones without experience, uh, the newly hired employees, often uh, experience significant stress. Uh, the second problem is uh, mostly related to the supervisors. On weekends, supervisors uh, need to make sure that the production line runs smoothly. Uh, if someone's absent, they have to adjust the schedules, uh, which isn't exactly enjoyable on a weekend. Uh, lastly, managerial personnel may face budget constraints that could lead to uh, project cancellations. Um, these uh, decision-making processes within uh, companies come with uh, certain characteristics. Uh, take risk consideration, for example, uh, decision makers are unsure about uh, taking a decision, but they have to accept the risk and make it. Uh, priority assessment is also important because it can determine task allocation, whether to highly qualified individuals or to those with lower experience. Uh, obviously, the ones with lower experience should also learn and do different tasks, but not, for example, in a situation that the company urgently needs to uh, deliver a product. Uh, lastly, mm, decision-making can be either mm, collective or top-down, hierarchical. Uh, collective decision-making mostly happens on the shop floor, uh, while uh, the top-down decision-making happens mostly on the managerial level. Mm, the extent of employee involvement within the company uh, is examined using uh, three factors. Uh, firstly, we looked at the opportunities for objection and suggestion. For example, objections and suggestions can be considered when they benefit production. Um, annual employee discussion also provide a chance for employee to express their objections and suggestions directly. Mm, however, some employee may avoid offering suggestions to keep a stress-free environment. Uh, another aspect of exploring involvement uh, is the transparency of decisions made. Uh, employees uh, express that decisions can be transparent Firstly, by uh, clarifying them in the meetings and uh, also by involving all staff in decision-making, especially at the shop floor level. 
Um, however, managerial personnel claim that um, some decisions uh, don't need to be understandable or transparent to everyone. Uh, the final factor in this dimension is um, the significance of trust. Uh, participants uh, emphasize the high level of trust among the team. Uh, there's also a strong belief uh, in the experience of the superiors. Uh, managerial personnel claim that trust is built through the proper functioning of the system and as long as it works effectively, trust is existed. However, employee also asserted that mismatches between decision making and implementation uh, can harm trust. For example, some decisions made collectively, but they um, implemented differently on the production line, and it uh, leads to uh, weak trust among team members. But generally, as we found, uh, there's a high level of trust among, among the team uh, in Flex, so that it has led to a decreased tendency to raise objections and suggestions. Mm, one of the important proposals of this research is to investigate optimization opportunities for the decision support system uh, from the employee's perspective. So uh, the third dimension explores the employee's expectations uh, from a decision support system with the aim of ensuring, simplifying, and accelerating work process. Uh, obviously, you know, one of the expectation is accuracy and reliability in decision making, which allow employees to make informed decisions without any doubts and uncertainties, uh, providing information about the consequences of solution is uh, another desire of the employees uh, as they want to be aware of potential outcomes before making any decisions. Um, protecting human discretion is the only expectation that uh, all interviewees mentioned it in some way. Uh, they asserted that they don't need definitive decisions uh, from this digital tool, but they need suggestions, they need support, they need to have a tendency uh, to make the final decision personally. It recognizes the value of human judgment and uh, autonomy in decision-making process. Um, furthermore, uh, to simplify uh, the work process, the decision support system should provide and offer multiple proposed solutions to the workers for every scenario, also, it should categorize the severity of different errors. When employees know the specific type of errors, they can easily identify what should be done. It really helps to reduce the time allocation spent on firstly identify the type of errors. And it also reduce uncertainty to determine the solution. Um, as I mentioned, employees should consider the risk of their decisions. So there is a desire for delegating risk assessment. They really want to relieve themselves of this burden and instead the system takes this responsibility. Um, finally, their expectations can uh, lead to accelerating the work process for example, there is a desire from supervisors to automate the staff assignment planning because it's a time-consuming task. Also, the employees wish to manage their paid time off, their vacation, sick leave, and their task assignment independently. Uh, currently, there is a skill matrix helping supervisors to allocate tasks, but uh, the employees believe that with implementing the decision support system, they can have this opportunity uh, to manage it personally.
And as the last one, the fulfillment of these expectations can obviously foster and enhance punctuality in the workplace. Mm, as a conclusion, I would say that the agreement among employees is that the decision support system should be act as a guiding mechanism and should provide insights and recommendations to facilitate making decisions. Uh, while the final responsibility for decision making remains with human actors. So from this consensus, we can say that the legitimacy of such system, this digital tool need to be approved by social processes. Thank you. And um, please feel free to ask if there is any question. So uh, thank you very much on all the presenters because I think now the presentation part is over if I understand it correctly. And now all three partners or all three presenters are available for questions regarding their specific topics. So are there any questions? It seems that you have uh, explained everything wonderfully. So there aren't any questions. Then thank you very much for your uh, attention and see you hopefully next by the next webinar. Thank you. Bye.